Lord, you are a fountain of life, restorer of my soul. I worship you today. Lord, you are the fountain of life, restorer of my soul. I worship you today. Lord, you are. Worship you today, Lord. You are the fountain of life. You restore my soul. I lift my hands to worship. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for another episode of the Fountain of Life podcast. My prayer is that as you follow this episodes and this series. God has been rewarding your life and uh, you found it very productive to invest some time of your day to either listen to this podcast or to watch it. But whichever way you engage with us, I pray that you continue and you share whatever you are learning with others. We'll continue today in our series, Escaping the Anxiety Trap, How to Worry Less and Care More. And so far, we've seen from the first two episodes the detrimental effect of letting go of ourselves into a lifestyle of anxiety and worry. And the key point there is a little bit of worry could help us to do things that could elevate us in a lot of ways. But when we descend into a perennial or excessive worrying, then it becomes deleterious to our health in a lot of ways. And I, I like expression that Dr. Dorothea Addo used. It says it's like putting your foot on a gas pedal. You practically accelerate your internal processes to the point where it becomes the root cause of a lot of medical problems that you have. And of course, none of us wants to be driving a car with no brakes. So at some point, we have to learn to take our foot off that pedal and apply the brakes. So in this today's episode, we want to continue to look at security because most often when people run into anxiety and worry, it's because of a continuous thought or something bad happening or projecting into the future and not finding hope or perhaps just this overarching feeling of doom and gloom that settles on their lives. In subsequent, in the following episodes, we also discussed how it's critical for us to realize that we don't hold all the pieces. Like Jesus told the disciples that, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. In Matthew chapter 6. So basically, we are limited. And because of that, we become susceptible to worrying, especially if we focus on the the things that affect our lives, the bread and butter issues and all of that. But I also did mention that we have a problem. And the problem is that we haven't been able to see God as the center of the universe. We see ourselves as the center of the universe. And that is something we inherited from Adam and Eve. That is our desire to be in control, our desire to be independent of God, to seek good and do things by ourselves without God. And we have seen that all of those, that effort, whilst it's good, it doesn't go very far. So if we agree that we can't do it by ourselves and God is indeed the center of the universe and he holds all the chips and he holds all the pieces and directs everything, then we need to find a way to engage with God. So true security is more than what we can do for ourselves. It's more than what we can, the security we can buy for ourselves or the assurance we can buy for ourselves. However hard we plan, however hard we try, 
there will always be adversity. There will always be curve balls that come our way because we don't know the future. So it's critical for us to find where to, to engage with God in true security because that is what we really need if we want to escape anxiety, if we want to get away from the life of worrying and excessive worrying and stress. We need to engage with God. But the door through which we left God as humanity should be the same door through which we get back to God. So if we chose independence of God as a way of running our own lives and we took control of our lives from God and we wanted to build our own security, then all we need to do is to find those doors and get back through them. That is to give up our independence, to give up control and be comfortable with being vulnerable. We saw how this plays out in last week's episode about when we're comparing Saul, that is King Saul and David in 1 Samuel 18, 11 and 1 Samuel chapter 30. One of the attributes that people who are anxious and worry a lot have is that most often they are impatient. They, they have a problem with waiting. They have a problem of feeling vulnerable. So because of that, they are prone to making a lot of decisions that rather ends up aggravating their worries and all of that. And that is what we saw in, in King Saul, that as he felt vulnerable, he, he realized that time was running out, Samuel hadn't come. At the time he appointed, he looked around him and saw that there was nothing that he could do by himself. So he decided to go and make that offering. And the Bible says that as soon as he finished that offering, Samuel appeared and told him, look, God can't work with you. It's just not practical to hand the reins of this nation to you because you have disobeyed the commandment of the Lord. And we saw in David that facing the same dire circumstances, he had the peace of mind. He had the strength to say that I'm not going to rush ahead of God. Even though people are ready to stone me, even though I feel the loss of my family and I'm in a really, really bad state, let me first find out what God says and what God thinks about this. I'm a warrior. I can take on these people and I can overcome them, but I'm not going to go until God says to do. So we see David asks the Lord not once but twice whether he should pursue them and whether he should go. And God assured him and he went. And God describes David as a man after his own heart. So in order to break free from worry and anxiety, there are three things that we need to do. And I discussed them in previous episodes. One, we should be prepared to give up our independence. What does that mean? We should learn to trust God. We need to shift the emphasis from ourselves onto God. I will go into more detail of that in today's episode. And then we also need to learn to give up control. That is to pause and say who is in charge here. Who holds my destiny? Who holds the purposes in my life? I have to give up control to that person. And then we have to learn to be vulnerable. You see, that is very important because trusting God brings us sometimes to points of feeling very vulnerable. Like Saul, he couldn't bear being vulnerable. He was left with only 600 people. Samuel hadn't come. But if Saul felt comfortable being vulnerable, he would have waited for God because sometimes waiting on God places us in points of discomfort and being vulnerable. We need to learn to live with that because God will sometimes dangle us over the pit for his own purposes. And you need to be patient. You need to learn to wait through the pain. So if we get these three things in place, we are ready to break free from the lifestyle of anxiety, excessive worry. So 
it feels like buying an insurance policy that is with what I'm telling you to do what does the insurer or the person underwriting that policy guarantee we need to learn that I'll go into detail with what God promises or what God offers Lord what will you give me if I give up being vulnerable or I accept being vulnerable I give up my independence and I give up control what do you offer and that is a question even the disciples asked Jesus they asked him Lord we followed you all this we gave up our businesses we gave up everything what is in this for us so it's not outrageous to ask if I give up my independence if I learn to feel vulnerable and I give up control what does that get me well I'm going to sound very cynical but then I'll get back to the scriptures and we'll continue do you have any other option whatever you've tried hasn't gotten you far so why not throw your chances with somebody who says he can take care of it so whenever we get to that point of worrying and anxiety we are always confronted with a choice do I continue worrying all by myself and on my own strength or I throw my lot in with God who holds all the pieces and holds everything so let's go to the scriptures as we try to find out what is in this policy for us as we try to find security so today is a build on whatever we have learned in true security excuse me about that so in today's episode let us expand on that first and foremost let us go to proverbs proverbs chapter 3 and the verse 5 to 6 this is what the Bible says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. So in this, we find what our responsibilities are, the premium that we have to pay. And then we also find the benefit of that policy. So you pay a premium, and then we see what is underwritten, what is provided. The first thing it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You have to do the trusting. That is a premium that you pay. And then leaning not on your own understanding. That is a premium that you have to pay for your coverage. The third is also that you acknowledge him in all your ways. That is the premium you have to pay. And then what is the coverage? He will direct your paths. So God is promising that he will direct your paths. You pay three things, he takes care of the rest. Trusting in him, not leaning on your own understanding, and acknowledging him. These are three crucial steps that feed into those three doors that are mentioned learning to give up our independence learning to give up control and learning to feel vulnerable first trusting in the lord trusting brings us to that place where you totally give up your independence you totally give up control let me draw it further down for you in this episode when you this is an illustration i heard from a, you know a very very wonderful man of God whose teachings really has been a blessing to me he, he used this illustration and it's so beautiful when you go to set up a bank account you go to the bank maybe you do your research and then you choose the type of account that you want you maybe select an account which is insured that's the federal deposit insurance corporation ensures you know that particular fund or that particular institution and then you trust your money to them and you go why 
don't we every day call the bank and ask them, hey guys, do you still have my money? We don't do that. And the reason is this, we trust the bank. We trust that even when that bank collapses, because it's FDIC insured, we will get our money. That is trust in simple terms. You don't call the bank every day to ask them if your money is safe. But at least in North America. But the point I'm making is this. That is the kind, that's what trust is, to totally let go. There is even financial instruments that people have called trusts. And it is giving up your wealth or something on somebody's behalf to somebody to hold for you on another person's behalf. So maybe for your children or for, for, for somebody. So you set up a trust for maybe an institution or an individual to hold it for you on somebody else's behalf. So trust, God is saying to trust him. That is to totally lean on him and to let go. That is about giving up your independence. That is about giving up control. And whilst that money is with that person, you don't call them every day to say, hey, are you still in business? Do you still have my money? So God is saying to do that. And then the other thing that he also says that don't lean on your own understanding. That brings us to feeling vulnerable. Because when you, you lean on your own understanding, you look at the circumstances. You tell yourself, you know what? I'm just three years away from retirement. I don't have enough saved up. What am I going to live on? Will I still be able, will I be on the streets tomorrow? All you have done is to just analyze what you have control of, the data that you have, and everything that you know. And then you are using that to form an opinion. And once you sense that it's inadequate, you descend into worry and we're still into anxiety. If we are going to break free from the cycle of anxiety and worry and all, we have to learn to give up our independence, to not lean on our own understanding. It doesn't mean we shouldn't think, but when we can see beyond the data, just let go. Just rely on the goodness and the mercies of God. There is a, a, a small poster I saw in a friend's room many years ago in college, and it says, when you come to the end of the rope, tie a knot and hang in there. You see, that ability to tie a knot when you come to the end of the rope, it doesn't mean blind or uninformed decisions and hoping, you know, a baseless, you know, hope. But it's tying a knot waiting on God's goodness and on God's mercies. Tying yourself to it. Then the other thing is to acknowledge him. Realize that he is at the center of everything. Realize that, you know what? I'm not in this alone. God is with me. And because of that, I am going to let him be a part of this decision. I'm going to let him rule in this decision. I won't ignore his input. And when we do that, God will come for us we begin to tap into our benefits and that is he will act he will direct your path so when you do this with God it doesn't leave room for worry and anxiety because he doesn't fail he's always on time he doesn't disappoint us and even what we see as failures in fact, they are blessings. You see, so in order to break free from anxiety, these are the basics. These are the things that we need to do. Let me give you a practical example so it doesn't appear like I'm just pumping scripture on you today. When we're about to record episode two, 
That is the episode with Dr. Dorothea Addo. The preceding week, or the, the week prior to that Sunday, our technician who runs a lot of this behind the scenes for this podcast fell ill. We really didn't don't have a backup. As if that wasn't enough, the main camera that we use for these episodes just won't communicate with the software we're going to use for that live broadcast anymore. I did the troubleshooting. I did everything I know how. Turned this camera software, hardware, did everything. It still wouldn't connect. And this was around Thursday. We have to start production and get everything on time for Sunday. This is... I was getting frantic. I mean, but... Though my human mind is telling me, you know what, you have to do something, do it very quickly. I told myself, no. At the back of my head, there's still small voices telling me, it's not over. You don't need to call this off. The options I had was to just dole out thousands of dollars to get a new camera. And even if that camera will even come on time, that is even something else. So I had genuine reason to be anxious and to worry. But I also have that small voice of the Spirit saying, No, you can overcome this. So one evening, I think that was Friday night, prior to the Sunday, I was just praying. And I heard the Holy Ghost tell me, I don't want to sound too spiritual. Scream! And I, I said to myself, scream? Come on. It just didn't make sense. I'm in the middle of things falling around me and telling me to scream, but I didn't lean on my own understanding. One, I acknowledge the Lord. I, I believe that this is God's work and he owns every piece in this. He directs everything that we're doing. He's in charge. I'm just an instrument. So if things are falling apart, he knows it and he, he wants to do something about it. I don't want to go about myself, rush off, spend thousands of dollars getting a replacement camera, looking for things that I could do all by myself. So that evening, I just let out as a blood curdling scream. I'm sure anybody hearing me will think I'm crazy. But, and then after that, I just felt to go back and take another cable, which I tried before and didn't work, to try and see if I could get the camera and the software in order to work. Guess what? As soon as I plugged it in, came on and it worked. The same cables I tried hours earlier or days earlier and didn't work. You see, I could cite several more of this where because I chose to bring God into the picture, I saved myself stress, worry, and anxiety because I recognize that I, need, I needed to give control to God. And I did in this is instance, this I'm talking about two weeks or three weeks ago. This is not like one year ago situation. There are many more I can cite as we go forward in this. But we need to learn to give up control. We need to bring ourselves to that point. If I was panicking and I just went online and ordered this expensive camera, I would have sat back and I'd be wondering, gosh, what will I do? Maybe send it back get my money and all of that but we save ourselves the anguish and the frustration if we learn to give up control if we learn to acknowledge him if we learn to shift the emphasis from ourselves Saul didn't learn that lesson it cost him his entire destiny David learned it and God describes him as a man after his own heart I'm going to continue in the next episode to look at 
what more God guarantees besides directing our path? He says he will direct not your path, but your paths. So it's not just once and done. It is everywhere that you go. Carry him with you. You see, there is a line in the lyrics of, you know, a song that I learned you know, I listened to many years ago. It says, everywhere you go, take the weather with you. And that is how we do life with God. If it's raining, take your, make your own weather. Take the weather with you wherever you go. It's not worrying and being anxious that it's raining. Bring God with you. When life is like a rain, life is a, a thunderstorm. Life is that. Make your own weather. Let God make your own weather for you. Everywhere you go, take the weather with you. Create your own weather. It is the choice that you make. You can choose to succumb to the lightning and the thundering and be frightened. Or give up your independence. Give up control. Learn to be vulnerable and let God create a bright and sunny day over your head. Continue in the next episode to look more at how we can find security. Looking more at the benefits when we give our control, when we learn to trust God, when we learn to feel vulnerable as we wait for God. May God richly bless you and thank you so much for joining today's episode. Amen. of my life, I worship you today. Matthew 11, 28 to 29. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest.